Good morning, Jim Hodges here, Seymour here. Seymour is a yellow lab that came in a few weeks ago for our residency training program. We're going to go through the little uh, video documentary as far as the best way to handle Seymour, and we go from there. He's a fantastic guy. I like to tell people that when we're working with dogs, we like to motivate them. Motivation equals praise plus consequence. We praise them when they do what we want, and we provide a consequence when they know what we want, they choose not to do it, okay? With Seymour here, he was really motivated by treats. When we have a dog that's that motivated, we want to do our best to use those treats to teach him what we want to learn, get him excited about doing it, but when we give a treat, we always provide physical praise and good words. One of the things I like to tell my clients is good words and good touch, okay? Now, normally what I tell people is once we get to a point that our dog is doing what we ask, we start backing off a, a lot on our uh, treats because we want our dog to obey us for who we are and what we say, not because they're working for a treat. Same with Seymour, but uh, I believe in Seymour's case and, and in probably 50% uh, probably of the dogs out there, if they really like that treat, incorporate it in your training. Just make sure that you keep a balance that your dog understands that he or she is working for you and not the treat. What's the best way to do that? Is to not have a treat in your hand. Ask them to do something and then when they do it, bring a treat out. I call it manna from heaven. They don't see it coming, but it's a wonderful way to reward them. Then of course, during life, you can try to teach them new commands, new tricks, go to off-lease work. In the beginning with all of those, you would use a treat to uh, motivate. He thinks I might have one, but I don't. So I'll use treats with Seymour. I'm not going to do them in the beginning here, and I may decide one to use one in this video. But if I don't, remember, video uh, treats are a very important tool when used properly, okay? So the very first thing, again, is let's go. Let's go is where we have our dog walking with us, not in front of us, by our side or behind us. We have to motivate, okay? Let's go. Add a boy when he does what we want. Good boy. See how he avoided the kitty cat? When he does what we want, we praise him. There's never a bad time to praise a dog unless he's in the act of doing something we don't like. Good boy. He uh, did not really check the cat out. I praised him when we walked by with that. I don't know if you noticed the tone of my voice, but my tone is encouraging. It's very uh, important to be motivating with our voice in all commands except uh, no or ant, which are the only two negative commands that I'll use or uh, reinforcements that I'll use. And I typically will take the DOWN and be a little firmer in my voice inflection. Everything else is upbeat and trying to implore and be positive. Let's go. Next thing we're going to do, sit. Hand signal for sit. Atta boy. Sit means sit. He has to stay in that sit until we release him. Big bone dogs, I try not to keep in a sit for a long time, but it's important that they understand they must hold the sit. The hand signal is like this, sit. If Seymour broke this command, I would take the leash, tap up, tap. I didn't say jerk. Tap up, no, sit. And that is my consequence. It's a bite with the leash in this case, okay? Uh, nothing wrong with the bite. We're not here to intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, or hurt him. We're just here to let him know, as in the dog world, one dog to another, that he's doing something that we didn't want him to do. So sit. Next thing, and it's tapping up. Next thing is the D-O-W-N. I will tap to the ground if he doesn't do that. And here's the hand signal from in front. Down. Good boy. I'll reach in and pat him. Fantastic. Down is just like sit. He has to stay there. Good boy, Seymour. Until we tell him to release. We can release him to go into a new command. We can release him, which is the B-R-E-A-K word, just to quit working, break. Now when I break him, he still can't pull me on a leash. Never ever can he pull me on a leash again unless he goes to work to be a narcotics dog, a tracking dog, a support dog, which he would be a pretty good dog, I believe, for support work. Uh, but other than that, he's not a puller, sit. Now from the side is the hand signal for down. 
I like to tell people, when a dog's in front of us, he couldn't see that down. He can see that as a down from a hand signal. And when he's beside us, he can't see that down, but he can see that. That's the reason I use the different down hand signals. He has to stay there until we release him. Okay? And remember, we can go to any command. Sit. Atta boy. And we praise and love him and let him know how good he's doing. Great. One of the things that I have a pet peeve with, and I believe it's a matter of when we're working dogs that we need, we do not want our dog to be sniffing the ground while we're working. I can't stand that. I believe they should be focusing on us. Now, people will ask me, when can he smell? Well, when you're walking him over to use the bathroom, let him smell the ground. But when you're doing some sort of work together, he, his focus needs to be on you. Let's go. Sit. Good boy. The next thing is the C-O-M-E command. The C-O-M-E command is very important. It's positive. He needs to come to us and sit in front of us. The important thing is we need to reel this leash in so it doesn't get in the way. He comes. He sits. Good boy. Break. The C-O-M-E command, I might use a treat a little more often, especially when I start doing off-leash work. I'll use treats an awful lot, okay? Little tiny treats, something that's very high value. High value means he loves them. He wants to work for them. Let's go. Next thing is the P-L-A-C-E command. The P-L-A-C-E command is basically Seymour will get on that bed. He can lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book, smoke a cigarette. I don't care what he does as long as he stays on the bed. This guy, he can have a bone, he can have an elk antler. We like to sell elk antlers around here. Uh, he can have any of those things, and he can stay on that place for an hour or two at a time. It's a great way to keep him out of trouble, to allow you a few minutes to relax and know where he's at, okay? If he did get up from the place command, we would get him. We would tap back in a movement, and I didn't really talk about movement, and I need to go back with that. We would tap back, no, no, no place. The hand signal is a point. Break. Let's go. So I'll try to come from the side so you can see. Play. Ah, boy. Good boy. As soon as his fourth foot hits that bed, we've got a praise, okay? So he's not working for a treat, but in an instant I can have him working for treats and still doing the same thing and having fun. I just want to demonstrate that treats aren't necessary for a dog to want to behave, and to obey, okay? Right, let's go. All right, movement. I screwed up a second ago. When we're walking around on a leash, if he didn't come with me, I would tap the leash in the direction I wanted him. Notice I said tap. I am not pulling. When I'm pulling, I'm doing the work for him. When I'm tapping, I'm making him think about what he's supposed to be doing and then respond. When I tap, and he starts to do it in any way that I tap, up or down or in movement. Always praise when he starts to do what I ask him to do. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Ah, boy. Good boy. The next thing is the huff or load up command. It's great for loading him up on vehicles. Even if you wanted to command him up on the furniture, who am I to say that you can't have a dog on furniture? My dogs definitely don't get on unless I command them to. Huff. Slow down. Good boy. So I used Huck, he loaded up, I praised him. Break. Good boy. Place. Whoa, good. What a good boy. Break. The last thing is the heel command. Sit. The heel command is a command that, uh, in essence, we have Seymour in a little rectangular box beside us. We give him a command, he starts moving with us. Our job is to try to keep him in that box. When we stop, he sits automatically. I don't use this a lot personally with my dogs, but I can see the uh, need for it. I don't think I told him to sit here. Uh, I think he just sat automatically. You can review the uh, video to be certain, but I'm not gonna bite him for it because I don't believe I told him. All right, you ready, bud? Sit. Now I've told him to sit. Heel, hand signal for heel. He's in a box. We stop, he sits, a boy. He has to hold that sit until I release him, okay? 
So we go again. I like to do figure eights. Heel. So we'll come around. Back through. Atta ah, boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. Down. Break. Sit. Down. Sit. Atta ah, boy. Break. He's been doing fantastic here. Now what will happen is, sit. Well, I was going to say, he's, I saw his nose twitching, so he probably knows I have a treat. Come. He comes. Now when I you give him the treat, atta boy. I give him the treat, good words, break, and get good touch at the same time. I also, when I give a treat, I don't feed it like this. This is a great way to create a piranha on a leash, dog snapping for it. I usually put it in my hand. Sit. Good boy. Pet, love, fantastic. Break. Play. Not play. Good. So you see, he's starting to hang up on the treats a little bit. So you see why we want to break ourselves from using treats all the time. It's wonderful for a great reward. Distraction. Good boy. Why did I praise him? Because he didn't get up and run after Dirty Cat. If you have any questions, you pick up the phone and give me a call. Jim Hodges, jimhodgesdogtraining.com. On Facebook, type in Jim Hodges Dog Training. My number is 336-945-3232. This is a great boy here. He's done a wonderful job. Now all we need is, is for family to uh, stand up, make him a part of their life, make him work for that position in the family, and then love him when he does what we want, love him 24-7. Thank you very much. Take care. Right.